Hi, everyone. Mitch from PickDogs.com here with Micah Smith and Dave Miller, professional sports bettors. And today we're going to talk about professional sports betting, what it takes to be a professional sports better. And this is just number one in our series about professional sports betting, becoming a professional sports better. And of course, in the questions and comments section below the video, it is going to be ask the professional sports better, and we'll address those on future episodes when you ask those questions in the comments. Micah, really happy to have you here. Dave, as well, welcome to the show. Micah, um, you want to just give everybody the elevator pitch? Um, who are you? Yeah, thank you, Mitch. Uh, uh, Micah Smith, I've been betting professionally probably six, seven years tops. Um, Started out like most every sports better in the in the world, just you know betting my own opinion. You know, went through college, losing money to bookies left and right, and I just after ten years of doing that, I kind of made it my life goal to find the best of the best betters. Um, I've traveled the country, meeting the best sharps in the world, in my opinion, and just like David here, David's a, a business partner of mine. I, you know, I met him seven years ago, so. That's been kind of my goal, and that's how I take advantage of what I do in, in the betting world is networking with the best of the best. Um, that's kind of a, a small elevator pitch of kind of what I do for this business. And me and David have a lot of stuff going on, but you know, but as far as the running the operations of the business and. Yeah. All right. Well, wow. we'll get into a lot more of the detail as the show goes on, as the weeks go on. We, but uh, basically, you know, to recap that for you, Micah is a professional sports better. He works with the best and the biggest sports betters in the world, including Dave, um, who's here with us as well. And uh, kind of he is this has been a lifelong project of his to put this together. Um, let's just say uh, the, the sports books that you probably have the apps for on your phone. Don't exactly have the red carpet welcoming Micah to the door <laughs> for, to uh, come use his app. While they're like, might have their little, uh, all these people standing out there in the books with their little promos and t-shirts they want to give you. I don't think uh, Micah and Dave have too many of those DraftKings t-shirts lying around. Dave, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to have you here. I know you've done a lot of stuff um, out on the internet before as far as uh, interviews showing your operation. You want to just give everybody just a quick overview of who you are. And, uh, you know, if you haven't heard of Dave Miller before, you you will. And the same with Micah. Micah is kind of more a, a laid back end of it. Dave has been more the front end guy um, going forward. But Dave. Okay. Okay. So next year will be my 20th year doing this professionally. Uh, I got into it just basically middling and scalping somebody next to me. I was playing poker one day and he showed, and I asked him, Hey, what is, what game or what team do you need? And he showed me each ticket and he, and I could see how he was going to make $150 no matter what happened. And from that moment forward, I was hooked. He took me under his wing. Uh, I, I learned how prices moved, why they moved, uh, being Pinnacle and Bet Chris and all of that pretty, pretty much right away. Uh, the basic fundamentals that it takes to win, I learned literally in week one. And I enjoy it, and I'm glad to be here with you. All right. Thanks, Dave. And, uh, boy, we're excited to have you, both you guys. And, uh, you know, like I said, weekly series. So um, we're going to learn a lot from you guys. And I think you'll probably learn a little bit from us, too, because we, we, we do things a little differently as well. But the thing is, is that, you know, I think – the, the big question here, and, you know, I'm going to hit the big questions right out of the gate, and we're just going to take just a peek at, at the answers to these, and, you know, we'll take deeper dives later on. But the first thing is, is, you know, is this something that anyone can do? I mean, people ask me this question all the time. How do I get started? How did you get started? Is this something anyone can do? And I always say, I believe it is something anyone can do if they're willing to do the work, because most people love the lifestyle, the idea of being a professional sports better. They see James Holtower on Jeopardy, right? All in. And they see, you know, this guy's a professional sports better. It can be done. And they've seen you, Dave, you know, out there. So they know it can be done. But, you know, most people also see other people who call themselves professional sports bettors who are driving around Lamborghinis with the big, you know, I don't even know what kind of brand watches these are because I don't, I don't have one, but it's like, um, you know, with flashing all this stuff. But I know personally, I don't even have time to drive the Lamborghini around the block if I had one most of the time, you know, just doing what I do. And I can, I, I can't imagine the time commitment that it takes on your guy's side. So Micah, 
How many hours a day in a week is, is this type of commitment to be a professional sports better? It's definitely more than full time. And what most people don't, don't understand is I have three kids. So, you know, and I'm on the East Coast mainly. And I'm back and forth but on the East Coast mainly. And the games are starting at 7 to 10 at night, right? And you have to be available during those times to be able to bet whatever edges are available. And what I didn't understand 10 years ago, what I understand once I met David is volume is key getting down as many bets as possible with edge. So you have to be available 12, 14 hour days, mostly to something, uh, you know, pops that you can able to take advantage of it. So it's a huge time commitment. Um, you know, yeah, the money's good hundred percent, but you gotta have time. You gotta have support from others around you as well. Have you ever taken a day off where they say, or, and then you find out that that was the day, like from day, right? like that was the day. You, know, you took the day off because you're like, you know, I really want to just take a day off. I just feel beaten up. And then you find out like that was the day, you know, where the floodgates were open. That ever happened to you? My, I mean, my days off, you know, I, I bet a lot of golf. My days off are getting some pre-game, pre-bets in, and then I'm done. So I, I'm fine with that. But, I mean – I don't, we don't take, I don't take many days off, man. And I enjoy it. I enjoy just, if I make a good bet, I feel good about myself, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I take vacations and whatnot, but I, I still got my phone, you know, I'm, I'm still wired in as they would say most of the time, but yeah. I mean, everybody needs a break to definitely re, you know, recoup themselves, but there's not many days off in my so, Dave, how about you? Like, I know you specialize in the point spread sport. So, do you get time off in the summer when it's when baseball takes center stage, or do you do you bet some baseball? Yeah. Or uh, yeah, you know. the next four months. The next four months, uh, it's just basically pregame bets, and I'm not sitting here running the operation. But I got to say one thing: if he takes a day off, he really doesn't because I bet for him. And then, funny story about James. So one day the Rampart, my account wouldn't work. And I went in there and I go, what, what's wrong with my app? And he goes, so you and one other person got your app taken away. And I go, oh, okay. And he goes, do you know who the other person is? I go, I didn't really care. And he goes, you and Jeopardy James both lost your, your app privileges today. So I just remembered that when you were talking. Uh, but anyone can do this. Like he said, it takes, it takes a lot of commitment. Uh, you need some type of, you need some, I, my advice to anyone trying to start is you need to have an out with a lot of market discrepancies. So soft numbers, uh, this is, I think this is key because you need a super high edge at first to turn a little bit of money into a lot. Otherwise, if you're trying to just go off of some pregame opinions or, uh, any other strategy, but your numbers are pretty much widely available. It's really tough to turn a little bit of money into a lot right away. So hold on a second. So when you say a little bit of money into a lot, so you started 20 years ago, what type of bankroll were you working with at that point? Well, I had, when I started though, I had, I think I had a hundred thousand, but looking back, I wouldn't have needed that at all because I was tying pretty much every single dollar I had up like every afternoon. So I just would have gotten the money that I got slower, if that makes sense. Like even if I had five or ten thousand, I would have bet both sides, and then and then squeezed out less money. But nowadays, I think people rather than bet both sides, uh, because I think most people would do that wrong and bet that they would they they should leave the side open that has value. So for example, the global price is seven. They have six at their book. They should just lay six for X amount of X percent of their bankroll and just leave that bet open. You ever have uh, one where you just like, this is the one and you hit it, you go outside of your discipline, you know, on that? Yeah. But but if me and Micah go outside of our discipline, I pretty much decide how much we're going to go out of our dis, out of our zone because of the, the, percent, the perceived percent edge. We're not going too far out where it's depression if we lose. Like, let's say we go... 10 or 15,000 on something, I'll text him, Hey man, we got 40 on this. And he puts cool. And then he, and then he wants, he says he, he, he's sick. He says he enjoys sweating the games and wants to know. The <laughs> <super big position. laughs> I don't enjoy that shit. Yeah. Most, most people don't, don't enjoy sweating the games. That's, that's for sure. But you ever, you ever go like outside the discipline and just say, 
you know, because I know our, our, our viewers are going are gonna to wonder this. You go outside the discipline and just say, ah, screw it. I'm going to throw two dimes on an eight-team parlay and then have the Rockets, like, bust you up or something. <laughs> Does that ever happen or you just strictly well, well, find well, the book? Well, if, if we bet a parlay, I mean, there needs to be – there's to bet parlays, most people think I, I'm going to turn a little bit of money into a lot, and this is a very weak – this is not the way it works. You want to have some type of like you can hide a correlation in your parlay. So you could bet like three little legs that are correlated and mix it with three others and just hope they don't see it or some stale numbers. So you're would, using you would, the parlay to mask your bets as opposed yeah. to using it as a lottery ticket like most people do. No, the lottery, the lottery ticket. This is weak. This is not what you guys want to do. Don't, of course. Don't, no, get I mean, away. You want stale numbers, correlations, things like that, a reason to bet parlays. So, the, so I always say this on my shows, and um, you know, I, I say this, and I wasn't going to go here on this show, but that's I, I love the topic. There's a reason why those tickets that are sitting at the counter, the parlay, uh, the te teaser ticket, the parlay ticket, yeah. and all those tickets are these bright colors. Kind of, I compare it to the Reese's peanut butter cups at the counter at Walmart when you're checking out. You know, you kind of didn't come to the store to get that. But here's the Reese's peanut butter cup, the, the, the you know, whatever is your thing. Butterfingers I love, right? I love all the, well, I like them all, right? Snickers. Those not are too many I'm going to, not too many I'm going to pass on. But it seems to me that the books know this, and that's why the tickets are always bright yellow, bright orange, bright blue. Hey, look at me, you know? It's like you could put 20 bucks on this and win 10,000, but nobody does, right? Because those are just... I mean, death. well, 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 they'll show you the 1.5 million that hit, but they won't show you the 5 million that lost from thousands of people during the same time. So, I mean, it, it's to their advantage too to market those and they're, and they're doing a good job. And then your average person just wants to be the next guy that hits a million dollars off of 500. And, and I, I see the excitement there, but we're catering to a more professional audience. So that's the only reason I was, I was. No, no, I'm, I'm, all, my, our audience is all over the map and we're trying to educate them while at the same time, you know, help them out, maybe steer them out of trouble and steer them into the right direction. So when you're, when you're using these parlays kind of almost like to mask your other bets and to kind of maybe get away with um, something that the books would, would tag right out of the bat. And because you're now a parlay better, it's kind of like, well, this guy's just a parlay better. So those are the suckers, right? And it kind of put it to the side. Um, are these round robin parlays or are these just straight parlays? You're going no, on? just just straight. And there's actually the more I'm because I just thought about it while you were talking. Uh, actually, the times that you could do parlays too, like let's say they just approve one for, I'm going to say two thousand, right? But they don't. But on a straight bet over five, they would uh, they would need approval or, or whatever. You could just do one for two thousand if you if you just somehow in that moment see three really good prices on in in either either one well either either a side and a total in one game and then a side or a total in another game so a mini correlation uh, or just three good prices the ultimate is when you have a correlation and three good prices and then you put the two thousand on it and it, re, it it's really hidden. You know, they so, don't even pay attention. They're, so this know, is kind of like a misconception because most people think, well, professional bettors don't bet parlays, that they, you know, that they're very disciplined and everything and whatever. So you can be disciplined in your parlays, but just when you're parlaying, it's very specific, right? That, yeah, like let, let's, say, let's say in a football game that, that you really, that you got a good angle on, on the plus seven on the dog. We'll make, we'll make up numbers here. And then you have a 55 and a half. Everyone else has it 54. You could take plus seven to the under there and then throw in a random third leg. Like you could keep throwing in random third legs, but keep betting those same two, the, the plus seven and the under. And then you could blindly pick something like you could go, OK, they've got 11 on this game and everyone else has a 10. Let me just throw in that plus 11 on, on some of them. And then you can look, oh, they've got a straight three on this game. Chris and Pinnacle will have it minus three, minus 125. Let me throw in that minus three on on part of it too. And you, but your, your your edge is that plus seven to the under, and you're just trying to get as much down on it in slick ways as you can. So and a lot of times, is it will, possible that you'd put both sides of the other game as the third because you're still going to end up ahead with those two plus no, one? 
No, no, right. because what you're I just mean, looking for the sharp your, numbers all the way through. Yeah. Okay. You know, if you're like scared money, I guess, I guess it would in theory. Well, we have, just, we have all kinds of, all kinds of readers. And it's like, if we can get them off good, of that to good. this, then, that's you know, good. that's a win. Good. That's good. Because let's say, let's say a game is minus one ten flat money line. So you throw in the two legs and you go, all right, I want to make money if the two legs hit and I don't want to go. zero and five on random other stuff I pick. So you could do that. You can take team A at minus 110, so you're minus 4.5% on the third leg. But on the first two legs together, you have such a big edge that you're still way in the positive. So, yeah, you could do that. So, Mike, I got, I'm going to bring bring you back in here. And um, so this is all super interesting stuff, and I know stuff that our, our viewers are going to find very, very interesting as well. So another thing that I, I read in the YouTube comments, and, you know, I – I deal with you know millions of people every year um, here on YouTube, and a lot of people talk about safer bets <laughs> and things like that. And to me, I always say you have to play to win because you ha- you have to be somewhat aggressive with your bets, right? To you're you're looking for good numbers, you're you're trying to make the right bets, but are you are you somehow? I think what the mistake that they're making is they're playing to not lose as opposed to playing to win, and it just seems to me that you guys are more. You know, I have this numbers, I believe in it, and I'm going, you know, because I heard I heard Dave use the term scared money there. Yeah, you got, you got to believe. I mean, if you if we have a perceived, you know, a system or, or an edge, you have to, you know. It's not going to work every, like, say you get busted up one day and it just, you know, it, I, mean, I mean, you're at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I say this to people all the time, you could have everything in line. You could have the right number. You could have everything. You got a 17 year old walk on kicker and a 40 mile an hour crosswind. And he, you know, he's walking out on to kick the game winning field goal. And that's, you know, that's what it really I mean, comes you, down. You know. know how many times we've had a 25% edge on a game on a on, on an under and it goes to overtime in the NBA and then the over hits in overtime. I mean, I can, I can count oh. on two hands. Those are the ones you remember, you know, for me, those are the ones that I, I remember all those, you know, we had a big one this year. We had it. They had a 20, yeah. they had a, they had a 20 point lead. It was the Hawks and somebody, and we had literally like a mistake. And somehow it went, and that was in the, and it went into the fourth quarter. And I said, "Oh my God, I don't!" And we had forty; it was forty-four thousand on it. I told him, "Okay, we got Toronto, 000 Toronto on against it. the Hawks, right? Was it Toronto? I, I, think, I think it was, was towards. And they they had a twenty point. I mean, they had they were up by so many, and then it was even like, it was even thirteen with like five minutes left, and and it. So I remember that one because we just kept firing it over and over and over. And but you know, yeah, it happens. You remember those? Yeah. Well, it seems like you still, you, know, gotta stick with it. you still gotta stick with it, man. I mean, if you something that we know that works. I mean, the, the hardest thing for me when I first came up in the game is how to deal with losing. I mean, you gotta learn how to deal with it because that. I mean, you could lose for a month straight and still have a good edge there. It's just that's mentality of training your mind how to deal with it. My, so, Mike, I know you're also you know you're a football fan. You're Georgia, right? You love your dogs. Um, that ever get in the way of your betting? Ever? Oh no, no. I had a, uh, I had a, a mistake. We fa- I found on, for example, Ohio State to win it all. It was a mistake. I mean, it was fifteen to one, fifteen to one to win it all. I mean, I, I was the biggest Ohio State fan versus Georgia uh, in the playoffs. I mean, that doesn't matter. Well, they did cover. Money, they covered. Money, they covered. Money, money, money. No, to win the game. No, oh. I had Ohio State to win the national championship. I had a huge line. It was just a mistake. I guess it must have been a misprint. You know, and the and Ohio State lost to Georgia in the playoffs, but I was no, I did, I'm not a team. I'm a money talks to my in my mind. So well, well, I'm, whoever we got to bet on is that team I'm playing for. I think that's a, that's good advice for everyone. Is that uh, you got to you got to treat it as a business as opposed to uh, as as a fan. Your heart will do nothing but get you in trouble in a lot of these things, and uh, you know we know that. So. Dave, I know that you don't generally follow the players, really, the, the teams as much. Um, you're more of just a pure numbers guy. Does it matter to you that it's sports and not the stock market or something like that? Or would you be just as, would you enjoy it just as much if you were betting on the stock market? Or you just like it because it's sports? Uh, 
well actually i wish i had skill to beat the stock market because then you're playing for endless money uh but no i enjoy i do watch i always make jokes that i can't imagine watching a game all the way through but i <laughs> if i'm there at the game i usually see at least 80 percent of it but no i'll watch i'll watch i'll watch at least like 30 percent of a game like last night i actually watched 75 percent of the nuggets game i felt like a square i was just like what am i doing i was sitting <laughs> cheering i was cheering with everybody yeah but there's so, not there's there's millions of fans out there there's nothing wrong with that i i just started i i'm the total non-hockey fan you know non-hockey follower i've been watching the playoffs and i've been enjoying it too like as as a fan and i think you know it's it's playoff hockey is exciting i mean there's a reason millions of people watch this and these guys make millions and millions of dollars um to play it not you know aside from getting us paid so i just want to you know we have you know a few minutes left here, and I just want to uh, you know continue on because I think this is these are just fascinating subjects. I know most of the time when you guys get rolling on these shows and stuff, you get really deep deep into this stuff, and you have a podcast. It's called Avoid the Trap, and Dave and Micah and they have other guests and, and on this show, and this thing is just like next level. I mean, the the content is straight fire, but we're trying to give you a little bit of education before you jump into it. Because it will, Dave, I mean, I've been betting sports my whole life. Dave can go over my head in three minutes if he really starts rolling, you know? And it's like, it's just, he doesn't do it intentionally. It's just the amount of knowledge that he has packed in there and just, you know, the way he he bets, it's just, I mean, that's that's why he is, you know. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it is, it is, it is what it is. But, um, so. You know when when you have that um, losing run, you know, and you and you and you keep going, it's like, do you have a um, threshold, or you just you just keep going all the way? What were what were we we were down? How much at one point, Michael? We we must have had. I mean, I felt like we lost a lot at one point, uh, but we keep going. I, it might, maybe yeah. we were down what three or three thousand or something like that. Yeah, we've had fifty thousand dollar swings before yeah and, and weeks definitely but yeah i've i i know yeah. well, man, so you gotta believe believe in the numbers you gotta believe so, in it but you can, are you so are you are you like the, a lot of the world where it's just you still get angry when you lose or is it just like no. hey tomorrow's another day no no, no we, he, he's unless he's a good actor he's pretty solid and unless he's like no don't worry you're great and then he hangs up the phone and like beats the table but i think i think he's pretty solid and then i'm pretty solid too so that that's what makes us a good combination we don't really get emotional uh especially on our trading our daily trading on the apps we definitely i don't get emotional there at all like literally it's rare that so you guys are but you guys are using a system so let me let me just let me just reel back yes. just half a second i just want to let every fill everybody in on this Dave and Mike are using a system where they find discrepancies in the line. They believe there are five books maybe out there that have the true lines where the guys are just phenomenal yes. at it. Real, the real Vegas books, you know, and they're not all in Vegas, these books, but they're the real books, you know, and then everybody else is just trying to keep up with these guys as they're shifting and moving lines. So there's disparities in these lines and some people are faster and slower at moving them. And these guys are experts at finding that. So, one of the things that a lot of the people who are amateur betters, because I know that, you know, the markets have opened up in the U.S. So your game has changed and everybody's game has changed. But one of the things that a lot of people talk about is sharp and square action, right? This is, these are common terms. And Dave, you know, mentioned the square watching the game and whatever. And it's like, we've all been a square watching the game. I mean, you know, Mike is like, <laughs> Mike watches the Georgia game. I'm sure he's the squarest guy in the bar, right? It's like, he, and he doesn't care, you know? He doesn't care. And it's like, I'm the same way with Miami. But we see these different tools that are available out there. Okay, everybody's got a tool. Everyone's pitching something. And we're seeing this, the most common thing that I see in my YouTube comments, the public is on this. The sharps are on this based upon some numbers that were given out in an app that costs 10 bucks a month. Do you think that, that, that those numbers are correct? Because they don't say where they're coming from. So like when they say 80, well, do you know, Jerry, familiar with this? Like where it says 85% of the public, 85% of the bets are on this team. And, um, you know, 
14% of the money is on that team. So that basically that scene is public money on it. Do you think these are correct? Or do you think it's just, I, just putting numbers out there I, just to sell an app? I think that the numbers are in the ballpark, meaning not necessarily those numbers are completely accurate, but if it says 85% and 15%, I do think that that is the public side and the contrarian side, but the better, the better numbers to look at are the overall ticket counts. Because if you look at the ticket counts, it's actual wagers placed on tickets in Vegas. So I used to always use that. And you would see like, okay, one team has 3,040 tickets and the other one has 2,321. And you'd see some that were really lopsided, you know, like 1,600 to like 50. And then you're going, okay, you're licking your lips on that one, on the 50, because you know there's almost no way that even the sharpest, even Billy Walters could move that number back the other way because they're going to get just hammered. So the bigger dis the bigger discrepancy in those two numbers, I would I would I would likely wait on those games if that makes sense and risk losing that plus seven so that Do I you could think, get eight and a half. What about a game that's had a massive line swing? You know, and you see these numbers and tickets and the bet numbers on one side or the other, and they're not telling you what number. These are bet at. I mean, you guys are the number guys, right? So it's like if the, your guys are, you know, if 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 Circa has twelve and and everyone else has got eleven, you guys are like circling like sharks, right? And it's like, I mean, that's that's your game. So it's like when you look at this numbers, it doesn't say these bets are made at twelve or these bets are made at eleven. It doesn't say anything. I mean, it just says the bets are made. Well, well, if I see Circa at twelve in a basketball game, not football, if because because twelve's not a key number in a football game, so they might just throw it up to twelve really quick to see what they can get away with, knowing that they really can't get exploited by people taking plus twelve, because eleven to twelve isn't even worth eleven cents. I think I think that's worth like six cents, seven cents. So so guys can line up, take the plus twelve, and they still actually have an edge. But in a basketball game with each half point nine or 10 cents, depending if it's pro or college, if they do that, I would, I would, I would strongly consider it laying the 11 or was Circa slow to move on that situation? Uh, because if they randomly put a basketball game to 12 and everyone has 11, there's a reason it's either sharp money. It's, it's, they wouldn't move it to a big public bet to 12 because I've even asked the guys, and I won't say who or what, they're going to move the public bet to 11 and a half, even if it's like 100 grand. But if a sharp guy bets 10,000, they're moving it to 12 off the market. And they don't look at it as being exploited the other way because they have an overwhelming sample size on that one person that went 10,000 on minus 11. And they know that the, the, that the line's going to, that the line's off and will most likely close 12, 12 and a half. All right. Hope that well, answers. Yeah, it does. And I think that going over these sharp numbers and the key numbers and all that, we got a whole nother topic for a show, I think, within itself, you know, and, and going over, you know, this sort of thing. I think this is what our audience is interested in. You know, we have a lot of guys that talk about buying points and doing that. And there's so you're, you know, you're saying at certain points, not worth it. Other other numbers um, might be a little worth it. You ever on, buy you ever buy on, points? On two in college basketball, you're supposed to do it especially if it's a low total um, too, because it, the frequency that it falls, just the way the game's played at the end where they don't advance the ball and, and uh, they play for the tie and then they'll go down. Two falls, it's, it's, I think it's worth like 11 or 12 cents. So if you can buy it for 10, but this is just getting really thin. Um, this is, this is it's, it's not necessary. I uh, used to be able to buy the half off of seven in, in – uh, college for 10 cents that's really thin it was worth anywhere from 12 to 15 cents uh, in college football back in the day and, and if it was a lower total like mid mid 40s somehow or then it was really worth it um if it was your bigger schools that don't miss extra points etc so but yeah it, it's not necessary to buy half points all right well that about wraps up our first show i mean we covered a lot more than I thought we were going to. And um, I think we got a good feel for uh, what's going to come in the future. Um, Micah, anything you want to add to, to close out here? Um, show number one. Um, and, you know, of course, a 
Avoid the Trap podcast um, if you guys are looking for a deeper dive at some of this stuff. Man, if, if I would say one thing, 90% of betting is, is, is mentality, having a strong mind and, and not knowing how to handle losing as well as winning, not over betting, you know, simple things will help you go a long way in sports betting. Well, these are things that we'll go over in future episodes and we'll show you, you know, exactly how you guys cope with it. And same thing with winning, you know, not, not going nuts when you win, right. And being disciplined on that side and not saying, Hey, I'm playing with house money because once it's in your yeah. hands, it's not the house money anymore. You know, it's, 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 right. that's that what I treat public, it. Yeah. It's my money. A lot of betters, they make that mistake and they think, you know, all of a sudden it's like, you know, they're, they're betting a dime a game and all of a sudden they're betting five dimes a game and, you know, and 10 and whatever. And that's how they get into trouble. But, sure. um, We'll avoid that. Dave, anything else you want to add before we go? I think he might be frozen. So we'll say goodbye to Dave for, for Dave for him. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for episode number one. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you did. And we'll be back with next episode. You guys know how these things work. They're always a work in progress. They're only going to get better and better. Anything you want to see on this, well, let us know, and we'll, be, uh, we'll address it for you. Thanks, everyone. Let's crush the books together.